Hi, my name is Stephanie Krieger and I'm a Microsoft Office MVP. In this video, I'm going to be demonstrating tasks from the article titled Using Office Open XML to Save Time Without Writing Code. And you can find that on the MSDN Office Developer Center. Well, to get started, let's jump right into Word. Okay, I'm going to show you a couple of tasks from the referenced article that are examples of how you can save time by making changes to documents from within the document zip package rather than within the program UI. Well, if you'd like help with the basics of what an OpenXML document zip package is or how to use it, you see the referenced article for some navigation basics and additional resources. And I will give you the URL for that article before the end of this demo. All right, the question for this demo is how much can you really do under the hood of your documents without writing any or even almost any XML markup? Well, okay. So say, for example, that this document that you see here is actually a 200-page report, and the company logo that you see here appears dozens of times throughout that report in headers and footers, different sizes, different formatting, etc. Well, of course the company is going to update that logo the day the report is due, right? So wouldn't it be nice if you could just copy that logo once and Word would do the rest of the work? Place it everywhere it needs to go, format it, position it, size it, etc. Well, that's an example of exactly what you can do in the XML without writing any code. Let's take a quick look in print preview so you can see where this logo is right now. It's on the cover page as you already see and then starting in the second page it's in the footer there. So let's go and see how to swap it out. Well if you have a utility that allows you to open up and edit access the document zip package without changing the file extension that's great, go ahead and use it. For the purposes of this demo, I'm going to use Windows Explorer. So let me go ahead and I'm going to just drag a copy onto the desktop, a copy of this document. Always a good idea to make a copy of the document before you edit the zip package, just in case of errors. And then we'll change the extension, the file extension to zip, and give it a look. All right, so pictures in an OpenXML zip package are always in the main document folder, which is the Word folder in a Word document package and inside the media subfolder. Now I have a few images here but since I know that my logo image has a transparent background it has to be a ping right not one of the JPEGs. Well you can always extract the image files and check them out if you need to figure out which image to replace but I know in this case. So I'm gonna go and grab my new logo you see that revised logo right here and take a look you can see it's really the same as the original except for different colors so the size and proportions are about the same, right? It's also in the same file format, so that's going to be a very, very easy file to swap out. To replace this file for the original, all I need to do is change the name of this file to match the name of the original in the zip package, and that's image1.png in this case. Then just drag, drop, replace, and change the file extension back. That's it. Just replace the file. This was a docm file. It happens to contain macros. And let's open it up and check it out. And there's my revised logo. Let's look in print preview. We can see the other instances. Revised logo with its formatting, sizing, positioning intact. And same goes for the instance that was in the footer. That was fun, right? Okay, well, you know what? Maybe you think that was too easy because the replacement logo was so similar to the original. So what if it's an entirely new logo? Maybe you're copying and changing the report to reuse it for another client. And then the logo might have different proportions from the original. Maybe the image file is even a different file format. Well, let's take a look and see how to get that done. Okay, so here is the new logo that I need to replace. Let's take a look at it. Notice that it's much shallower than the original. Also, you can see that it's a JPEG. It's not a PNG, so I'm going to have to edit a little bit of OpenXML here because of the different image file formats. And I might have to make a quick adjustment once I reopen the document in Word because of the different image proportions. But both of those tasks are a lot faster and easier than they might sound, so let's check them out. All right, let's change the file extension for this document again so we can get back into the zip package and go back into the main document folder, into the media folder. Now I can change the name of this file and I'm going to make a copy of it just for safekeeping. I can change it to image 1 but I can't change it to image 1 PNG right because it's a different file format. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to delete the original file because it won't be able to be replaced. It won't be exactly the same file name since it's a different extension. And then the other thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to 
change this extension to JPEG in this case. The reason I'm going to do that is I already have JPEG images in this document zip package and they use the four character extension. Because it's the same file format, there's no harm to the file for me making that change, but it's going to save me a step a little later and I'll show you what that is shortly. Just drop the file in and now because it's a different file extension I'm going to need to take two quick steps. First, we're going to need to update any relationships that reference that image file. There's going to be a rels or relationship file for each document story in which that image appears. So to find those, in the main document folder where we are currently, we're going to open the rels or relationships folder. And you can see here the document.xml.rels file, which is the relationships file for the main document body, and the footer1.xml.rels, and that's going to be for the footer. You remember that when we looked in print preview, this image does appear in both the document body and in the footer. So let's go ahead and copy both of those out. And let's start with document.xml.rels. Now again, so that everyone can easily follow along, I'm just going to edit this document in notepad, this document part that is. When I open this file you see relationships for each of the parts in the main document folder as well as you're also going to, this is where you're going to find the relationships for images that appear in the main document body. Now I can actually see the image relationship right here and I see the name of that file, right? The target is the location and name of the file for which we're writing the relationship and I know that I need to update that file for the new extension. If you have a lot going on in this document and you can't easily find it, remember even in Notepad you can use the find feature and just search for the name of the image that you want to replace. Okay, once that's done we'll go ahead and save this file and close it. Make the same change in the footer1.xml.rels and I do want to mention that the reason that you're seeing structure, you're seeing XML structure in the files that I'm opening, even though I'm using Windows Notepad, which is not a structured editor, right, just a text editor, but I've previously opened these parts and saved them in a structured editor. If you want to use a structured editor and you don't have one, you can download a free utility from Microsoft called XML Notepad 2007 and you can get the link in the referenced article for this demo. So let's go ahead and drag these files back into the zip package and we're going to replace them both. Then the other step that I may need to take, and in this case I actually don't, but let's take a look at it anyway. If you add a new file type, right, if there wasn't already a JPEG file in this document, and this is the reason that I changed the extension to the four character JPEG extension so it would match the JPEGs that are already in the document. If you don't already have a file with the same extension in this document zip package, you need to add a definition for that extension to the content types XML file. Now I'm going to drag this out and I'm actually I'm going to go ahead and open it in Internet Explorer. If you don't have a structured editor, it can be very handy to just open the file in Internet Explorer so that you can see the structure quickly. And notice that I've got a default extension already defined for the JPEG. I don't have to add it in this case. If you do need to add it, you can check out the article that's referenced for this demo and it will tell you how to get that done and show you the markup for that. I'm going to give you the URL for that article very shortly. But first, let's take one more step. Change the extension back to docm open the document, and let's check out our results. Well, that looks pretty good, doesn't it? Take a quick look in Print Preview. The logo's replaced on the cover page. It's also replaced in the footer. It actually looks pretty good, but remember the dimensions of this logo, it was much shallower, and it's been vertically stretched. Now, if you had this logo appearing dozens of times in the document, you wouldn't want to go to each instance and manually edit the proportions, right, if it became distorted. Well, you certainly don't have to. Actually, just a few lines of VBA, super simple VBA macro, can take care of it all for you in one click. But instead of going into the VB Editor right now and walking you through the steps of that, I'm going to go one better and I'm going to give you the URL to the article for this demo and you can copy the code and try it out for yourself. So you can find this article on the MSDN Office Developer Center, which has a huge array of resources, so definitely spend some time there if you haven't already. And if you'd like the direct link to the article for this demo, you can see that right on screen as well. Okay, so you know what? I'm going to let you get to it. In the meantime, thanks for joining me, and bye for now.